Here's a typical example of a statement. It says statement at the top, and at the bottom you have your coupon. The coupon is a tear-off, and it has the name of the company to be paid, it has the amount to be paid, and it's got the account number and a date on it. All it needs is your signature to become payment. The coupon is a negotiable instrument. It has the necessary elements of a check, which are 1. A date or time for set off. 2. The amount of, to be set off in dollars. 3. Who is to be setting off the balance, or we think of it as being paid. Who's getting paid? You know, PG&E has a little coupon in the bottom, let's say. So they're the ones that you're going to have the debt set off with. And it just needs to be signed by you with an order to pay to complete it as a check to the utility company or the credit card company or the property tax successor, etc. Here's an example of Doug Riddle's method for doing approved for value. Accepted for value, he, he, this, this would be a bill from the IRS. <coughs> and as you'll notice later, there's a coupon on the bottom that we're going to turn into a money order. But across the top of it, you're going to write accepted for value, exemption from levy. Anne Marie Martinelli, which would be your name in upper and lower case, December 12th would be the current date, 2009. Exemption ID number 12345678 would be your social security number with no dashes. Deposit to the United States Treasury and charge the same to Anne Martinelli, the straw man's name. So it would be your straw man's name in upper case letters and then your social security number, which is the number for your straw man, because whenever you get anything from social security, it's addressed to the straw man, isn't it? It's the straw man's account. So it'd be 123-45-6789, the social security number. Then you'll see the bottom is a coupon where it says, questions, call us at 1-800-829-8374. Please mail this part with your payment payable to the United States Treasury. And then, and then it says money order. You're going to write the words money order on it. Put pay to colon United States Treasury 8500 and no cents because that's the amount that they're saying is due. The amount due here is 8500 So it would be just like filling out a check and you're going to say who you want the check paid to. You want it paid to the United States Treasury and the amount and you're going to put the date and then you're going to put the amount just like you would on a check and then you would put by your name and then your account number, your social security number with no dashes. In addition to that, underneath your name where it says by colon your name, you would put as authorized representative. I would put that in and then I would put void where prohibited by law beneath that. So that if it's not, if it's against the law to write this this way, you've exempted your writing by saying void where prohibited by law. Any corporation has to follow the rules of the United States, in all capital letters, parent corporation, of which they can't demand to be paid in gold or silver. And so they can only require set off or zeroing the account. This is not true with private debt. And the reason they can only be set off is because in order to be a corporation, they applied to who to become a corporation. You can't be a corporation, which is a license to do something, unless you apply to the state to get that license. So they have to follow all the rules of the state that they applied to, of which HJR 192 applies. So they can't demand to be paid in any specific form of money. This is not true with private debt. Private debt is where one flesh and blood man contracts with another on the private side. You can't pay off your loan to Bob with approved for value. I mean, if, but when you got the loan for your car, since they created the money with your signature on a promissory note and didn't actually advance any of their own money, 
you can send them that payment coupon stating that you are authorizing the Treasury Department of the United States to use your exemption account at the Deposit Trust Corporation where your birth certificate is stored and accounted for to set off the amount due. There, we live in wonderland where nothing is real, especially in the financial world. Of course, you have to know and see that Wall Street has obviously known about this for quite a while as there is no limit to their greed and corruption and they never give anything of value while they demand you work for everything you get of value. To see the Wizard of Oz for what it was, a description of the monumental changes the government was foisting on the unsuspecting public. The straw man is the fictitious entity created for commercial control. The tin man as in TIN or tax identification number, is the newly created tax identification number. The cowardly lion represents Congress, who allowed the bankruptcy to happen without challenging the Federal Reserve. The yellow brick roll road represents the gold disappearing into the Emerald City, a city where the Federal Reserve green paper notes replaced the gold, the Emerald City. And the Wicked Witch of the East is the industrial corporations. The Wicked Witch of the West is the bankers. The, the wizard who didn't want anyone to know what was going on is the Federal Reserve. The evil woman who wanted to take everything toto to, where toto means everything in Latin, representing the bankers taking the farms and property of everyone during the Depression. Originally, Frank Baum, the writer of Wizard of Oz, wrote Dorothy having silver slippers as the silver was being taken too, but Hollywood changed them from silver to ruby slippers. If you watch the Sovereign Status Show, you will get more about the takeover by the slave masters here in America, and this is one of those topics where the cogn cognitive dissidence becomes easily apparent as it is impossible to believe what is happening upon first glance. Even with evidence supporting the explanation of things, only little by little will one be able to absorb the monumental travesty forced upon the public by the evil bankers and their cronies on Capitol Hill. When Barbara Boxer was presented with this information that she didn't want to hear, she fell mute and did not answer it. Why? Because she would lose her job, and like most people, it is a lot to ask to give up the riches that come with being a minion of the dark side. I believe that good occurs when we want our fellow creations of God on this planet to do well, and we don't harm others. And evil is when we do harm to others, as is portrayed in Jesus' golden rule. Do unto others as you'd like others to do unto you. Boxer chose not to work for the public she had sworn to serve, and instead she, you know, honored her contract with her masters. It is our job to question authority and to make the public servants become aware of the reality of their position and abandon their false ideas that they are justified in oppressing and causing injury to the people, or at least look in the mirror and admit to themselves that they are wrong with an accepted for money v value money order, you need to research the laws, the reasons, and make a thorough investigation into this material because you are responsible for your actions and can be held accountable for your actions. This presentation is to show material and concepts that are not available on mainstream media that is owned and controlled pe by people who have a vested interest in you obeying their commands and not finding lawful excuse to disobey their commands. The information that was very difficult to find 40 years ago is now easy to find for anyone with a desire and an internet connection. I don't take any information as truth but do my own research and operate from a position I know to be well documented. I know the governments, the bankers, the credit card companies' positions that I have a liability to them are unfounded.